Good morning and welcome to this short overview of the latest release of Map for Mine Manager. My name is Nigel Galt, I am the director of Olympic Limited and the lead developer for Map. Um, as some of you may be aware, um, the Map 2.0 release was all about uh, extending and enhancing the current user interface uh, to enable us to be able to deliver um, more commands and functions as we move forward with map um, so with no further pause for anything I'm gonna get straight on with that and we're gonna dive into the new changes um, so what have we done with this well as, as you're all probably aware um, as map grows uh, the ribbon menu uh, has become quite heavily populated with commands and in previous versions we had it set so that you had to or you could always turn commands on or off so you could uh, contract the amount of commands that were on the ribbon to uh, give it a much better look and make it more accessible um, but one of the problems with this is was that if you had a command that you wanted to use and it hadn't been placed on the ribbon you then had to go into the settings to actually be able to access that command um, and uh, enable it within the ribbon before you could use it so there's a little bit of a uh, a pain really from a time constraint point of view so we wanted to introduce an interface that would enable you to get to any command within map without having to necessarily uh, go and apply settings um, while also being able to maintain a ribbon as well of, uh, that contained all of the favorite commands or those functions that you use the most so what we thought we'd do is we'd bring it into a task pane as an additional interface so with map 2.0 you will now find um, that there is a map 2.0 task pane which when extended will actually give you a view of uh, all of the commands represented as what we call a command tile um, and basically these are exactly the same as the commands that go across the ribbon um, but you just interact with them in a different way um, moving the commands into the task pane has given us the ability to be able to do some other cool stuff as well um, the actual layout is a flow panel layout so as you uh, extend the task pane or contract it then the tiles will automatically um, move into place so you can see more or less um, you've also got some presets here as well so you can uh, just click these to move the actual columns into two three or four um, three is usually the default so that gives you a quick way of being able to just see which commands that you're looking to access and also there's a scroll bar so you can scroll up and down um, if uh, commands are out of view on the bottom you'll also notice on the uh, on the new layout is that uh, each tile is surrounded by a border which is either red or green um, now what this uh, indicates is if the border is green then that command is actually enabled within the ribbon so it will appear obviously in the task pane and also in the map ribbon which I've got open at the top here um, if it's actually red then obviously uh, it's still accessible within the task pane but it's actually not accessible in the ribbon um, so you can turn these tiles on and off or red and green to actually control what, what displays in the ribbon so for example if I look at the collection access which is currently disabled if I right click this uh, you can see we've got showing ribbon menu it's currently disabled if I left click that that will immediately come in and show over here now in the in the map ribbon and to turn it off just repeat the the action and then the, that will disappear so you can see at a glance which ones are enabled which ones aren't um, but because they're also directly accessible now within the task pane it means that if something's not in the ribbon that you think oh I need to use that um, all you've got to do is slide the task pane out and you can access it there and then and utilize it straight away the other thing that we've done is we've changed the way that the dialogues work within map now so whenever a dialogue is fired it will always um, be located in either the top right or the top left hand corner of the my manager window depending upon um, which interface you're using so for example the best way I can show you that is if I open up the map settings you'll see that I'm using a right-handed interface and this dialog will appear here and it does this all the time for all dialogues so if I was for example if I find one such as map favorites you'll see that has some settings that I can apply so if I click the settings for map favorites again the dialog appears in the top right hand corner 
so all of the dialogues now will appear there um, so it doesn't matter whether the dialogue is uh, involved in a in a command action or whether it's settings or anything like that they will always be in that place um, I did mention that you could use it on a uh, left and right handed interface and basically that's available um, up here um, now there is a setting in my manager that you can do uh, for my manager options but we thought we'd just put this directly into map as well so if I click use left handed interface and I update the settings you'll see that the whole thing shifts over to the left hand side and everything now changes so that all of the dialogues are fed from the left hand perspective rather than the right and again if I wanted to change that if I looked at the settings you'll see that these now drop in on the left hand corner and not the right so I'm going to put that back because that's the way that I roll um, so yeah so as you can see um, the interfaces are much uh, much more accessible um, it means that you've got access to every command without having to uh, make it available to you within the ribbon um, and it also means that you can access all of the settings and, uh, and other instances of the command that you need um, we've also got float over uh, tooltips as well for each command so as you hover your mouse over um, we've kept the timing on this to about around about three to four seconds so that uh, they don't pop up all the time when you're just floating across the actual task pane um, but if you leave your mouse in one of those tiles for four seconds or so you'll see that pop up which gives you a description of what the command will actually achieve so the the reason we've done this um, is to to really make map more accessible but the the result of that is that it means that we can now continue to add uh, and um, commands and functions to map without being too concerned about how people are going to access them and wh where we were going to put them it was becoming quite um, uh, restrictive with the amount of room in a single ribbon um, we had thought about perhaps producing dual ribbon so having two two map ribbons um, and splitting some of the uh, the group the action groups apart uh, across two ribbons but we thought actually when we looked at it that the best way to do it would be to include a task pane um, and let users then customize the ribbon to their everyday uh, functions and then they can get access to any of the ones that they use only occasionally just by popping the popping the task pane out so that's why we did that the other thing that we have in the task pane as well is as I mentioned that the, uh, the splitting of the topic groups um, on the uh, on the menu for the task pane we have this which allows you to actually um, select something such as topic action so if you select that group the actual dialogue will change so that it actually comes up with um, all of the uh, commands and functionality for that group just clear that um, so w clicking it again will also then bring it back to its original default state as well so as I, th I think you'll agree it's a much nicer way to uh, to engage with the commands um, obviously the old settings screen from map has been replaced with this now so all settings instead of having uh, one settings dialog where we were trying to cover um, all of the different settings for the different um, different functions etc um, what we've now done is basically put the settings on the right click menu of each of the commands individually um, so just clicking that will bring their their own unique settings for them in the in the top right hand corner so that was where we'd spent most of the time for map 2.0 um, we did want to try and also bring in some new functions but due to some uh, time restrictions and some delays obviously with my manager 2016 uh, being released we had to sort of uh, make sure that map was still going to be quite um, compatible with the with the new things that were happening within that um, so uh, it, it got slightly delayed and unfortunately we didn't want to delay it any any longer to put um, some of the other uh, functions that we had waiting to waiting to go so um, for this release we've, we've included um, one new function which I'm going to go over now um, that was the edit property value function and what this does is it enables you to change a value or even a property type um, of a custom property across the map in one action um, so what this means is if you've built maps up and you've been using a property value that is repeated in different sets of custom properties across different topics um, instead of having to go in and change those one at a time which you currently would have to do um, you're able to actually uh, call up a dialog select the uh, property that you want to change and actually have all of those properties across the map change in one go so I just open up um, an example map here so you can see we've got a, a map here with four um, 
secret agents in there um, and all of them have got an office number which is the same so what I want to do is actually change that office number to a different number so I'm going to use the the task pane to do this so you can see this in, in effect so the one I'm looking for is the editor the property value so I click that and it helps if I have a topic selected so I click that the dialog then opens in the top right and we can then see all of the different properties that are utilized on the topic so I just select the one that I'm looking to change um, want to change the office number you do have the ability to change the type as well so you can use this to actually um, just change the actual type even if you didn't want to change the value to do that you would just select the new type and also just repeat um, the current value in this, this next field here so I'm going to change that so we'll read it so it's 0208 Dash and we'll swap the number around so we'll call it 4224144 so once you've entered the new uh, information and the new value click the update values you'll see the little progress bar appear and then it will go through each of the topics and then update that number so again, there you go it's a very quick way to be able to change um, properties that you've got repeated across the map without having to go around them one at a time so that's all we could really get into uh, 2.0 which we were a little bit disappointed about but as, as I'm sure you'll agree that um, the work that we've done on the interface was, was quite important to enable us to keep um, bringing you more and more commands and functions um, so we're hoping to uh, try and get some interim updates out which more about in just a second so um, with regards to uh, minor additions, improvements and bugs fixes, there hasn't really been anything that we've done in 2.0. Um, we weren't made aware of anything. Um, what we are doing is obviously the help map's been updated. Now there will still be some content within the help map that um, we'll be looking at some old screenshots, particularly in relationship to the settings area in map. Um, we are going to be going through with each sort of successive release and updating those screenshots so um, as, as each release comes out that that help map will actually um, slowly become up to date um, and on the horizon for map 2.1 um, because of the delay with 2 um, we do have some other things that we we want to do and um, we wanted to have uh, about two or three actual functions um, when 2.0 came out um, so what we're planning on doing is potentially releasing an interim update um, so it won't really be 2.1 it'll be you know 2.05 or whatever but um, we're hoping that that might be sometime around uh, December so it might be a bit of a Christmas present for map users um, and what we'll do with that is hopefully put some enhancements in um, and do some minor improvements as well we are still uh, tightening up a lot of the code behind map at the moment for 2.0 um, so there are there is a lot of work going on in the background there just to tighten things up make things a bit smoother and trying to get any of the little niggles that, that we might find um, out obviously with the new my manager 2016 there is um, now multiple windows and we have to be a bit careful with that because of the way um, you have to know that the map that you want to change or the topic you've got selected in the map you want to change is the active window when you go back to the application window to access map so we're aware that there could be some issues that may arise um, around that scenario but what we've chosen to do is to actually just deal with those as they're reported to us and we'll jump on it quite quickly um, as I'm sure any users who are viewing this are aware um, when something's found with map we're genuinely pretty quick at um, getting an update out very fast to actually put those issues right um, because we just don't want you guys to have to be working with a product that's not doing what, what it needs to do so um, map 2.1 um, that is as I previously mentioned you know with map 2.0 we're moving to quarterly releases now so that's going to be in Q1 of 2016 um, we're hoping that we'll have two or three um, uh, good new functions in it for you so uh, I think at that point we'll be looking at bringing the total number of commands and functions of map up to somewhere around 40, 41, 42 functions um, and hopefully at some point uh, next year we'll, we'll get it to the magic 50 that's that's the aim and um, I wanted to take this opportunity also to just thank everybody for their feedback because um, it's only the feedback and suggestions and ideas that um, that you are pro providing us as users 
um, that's really enabling us to sort of uh, look into these requests and say well you know is this possible isn't it possible and wherever we're finding these things that we think this would be a great a great addition to map and it's something we can do with the current API from my manager um, then we'll we'll do our best and our utmost to get it in for, for you so uh, thank you to all of those people who have um, been submitting feedback and suggestions over the last year and um, thank you for being a map user um, we we hope that you like this this new sort of interface we think it looks nice inside the new my manager 2016 which if you're still using one of the previous versions of my manager um, it's really worth having a look because it now has flow charting and concept map capabilities um, built in um, although some of you may may recall that we had that ability through Network Builder which we provided from Harport Consulting um, but now with it built into um, 2016 um, it really does offer um, quite a nice uh, uh, interface to work in for those sort of um, different map styles um, and as I say if you find any issues when you're using any of those new flowchart or concept map templates um, where you're interacting with the map add-in then please do let us know so that we can uh, get on top of those as they arise so um, very quick one this time thanks very much for your time I hope you enjoyed the uh, video and I hope you enjoy using map with the new interface and um, look out for the map 2.1 update at some point around mid Q1 of next year thank you very much bye bye